Y'all, what's up? Your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. Um, now we are going to talk about Bell Collective really fast. I did get a chance to do a video, y'all. It's literally been storming, so there's not that much light. So I'm gonna apologize ahead of time that this video might be a little, you know, low lit or whatever. I'll try to edit it, and uh, you know, when I edit this video, um, to give a little bit more light. But nonetheless, like I said, I want to talk about Bell Collective. I have the beanie on, y'all. Ignore it. I got, I'm getting my hair done, washed, and stuff. So it's in the you know, it's in the Harriet Tubman braids and I couldn't just come on screen. It was either the beanie or the bonnet and I just could not come on camera in a bonnet. I just can't do it, y'all. So, beanie it is. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys, let's go ahead and get into Bell Collective. There honestly wasn't too, too much this episode. So, this it's just going to be like a quick recap. So, we pick up where we left off with Sanjay and Gucci going back at it. Basically, Gucci is like, you know... Well, if Selena doesn't want to show the girls a good example, then, you know, it's just going to have to be me. So she talking to Sanjay and she's explaining, like, I didn't, you know, initiate with your mom. I went over there to talk to Tamara. She's like, it don't matter. It don't matter. You shouldn't have went over there. First of all, Sanjay, I get that's your mama. But, like, accountability is accountability. Like, both Gucci and um, Selena have, oh, you know, a part that they play in this. And nonetheless, you know, regardless of Gucci going over there and saying something to Tamara and not your mama, your mama, when she walked away, was like, hey, come back. Like, your mom definitely played a bigger part in than you're wanting to admit. I'm not saying Gucci's hands are totally clean, but that leans more to me on Selena's side of, like, why that fight happened. Um, she was like, yeah, girl, you know, it, you know, sometimes people just black out, you know, after years of disrespect. I feel like Selena and Gucci have been going back and forth with each other. I feel like, Sanjay, you're also not admitting how much Gucci really was involved in you girls' life. It's just a whole lot of, of hodgepodge when it comes to um, that family. Um, so she was just like, you know, I want to apologize to you girls, you know. And, you know, Sanjay's like, this you know, didn't make no sense because, you know, obviously y'all were, you know, like our mom's daughters and like we're your stepdaughters and we've been trying to work. And they really did all of them kind of get to a good place with the sisters. You know, they were having babies and kind of being cool with each other. Like the family finally reached a good spot. And then this happens and it's like now they take 10 steps back, you know. Um, so... Then they get to talking about um, uh, Marie, her daughter, she was on there. Sanjay, her sister, having a baby, her, her nephew. And Gucci's like, hey, I haven't seen it yet. And she was like, can't wait to see him. And Sanjay's face kind of like, like, girl, she was not here. She is not here for Gucci. And that's cool. You might not be here for Gucci, but also Sanjay, like, your mama not innocent. Like, she definitely, like, they both, I think they both knew, like, okay, we probably gonna have an interaction, but I don't think they anticipated it going to blows. Like they knew at some point, like one of the, the other was gonna be there that, you know, lights, camera, action. But I don't think they was expecting a knockdown drag out fight. Like that's just, I feel like they like both let the cameras get to them more Selena cause Selena's the one that's not on the show. So she was looking for her, her in. And instead of just letting the moment go by and be like, okay, I'll get you at another moment. Selena's like, I got to seize the moment. Like she felt like, no, I'll come back and talk to me. Like you see me standing here. Like she could have let it go. That's just my opinion. But um, moving on. So we see Tamara. She's at the radio show. 97 something, something, something. Your girl Tamara, you know. And so she's talking to Quasi, I guess. You know, the way they putting it. They trying to make it seem like her and Quasi, my guys, a little something, something. What's going on? A little more going on. But she's talking to her friend Quasi and basically like, you know, right now I'm in a weird spot because, you know, Damon, he basically kind of like minimized what I do as to like, oh, I just sit in a chair. And see to him, a lot of people who look like people who like do, who either talk or do reviews or like on camera, like more than anything, it might not be physically demanding, but it's very emotionally and mentally demanding. And that almost can kind of be like worse because mental exhaustion, like that takes time. Your body could be, you know, physically tired, but after a good nap, like, you know, your body is rested. Mental exhaustion, you just kind of like, it takes it out of you. So yeah, to the mind, it might be, well, you just sit in a chair all day. He was trying to minimize what she do. But 
at this moment, she not worried about Damon. She said, you know, me and Damon, you know, I, we're kind of like not on the same, you know, wavelength. Um, she not pressed about an engagement. Tamara is not here for it with Damon. I, I don't know if getting with him was a storyline. I don't know what it was. But nonetheless, you know, Quasi asked for her embryo baby. She's basically saying like she's going to wait till God's time and she's not going to push it. You know, I don't know if Tamara wants to have babies. Maybe it's possibly that she only want to have babies for her mom, uh, for her mom and dad. Because, you know, people in the South, they want them grandbabies now. When they, they want them grandbabies. And the South, it'll go real quick from you better not be out there having sex. You better not be out there fucking next then next you you know it's where the grandkids at like where are my grandbabies when you gonna give me some grandbabies like wait a minute like dang like okay <laughs> um so um what else were they talking about Tamara honestly she was really just discussing like how it is like for her work and she's pushing and they wanting to do that podcast and she's wanting to show Sorry, y'all. Uh -huh. And she's wanting to show the real Tambra, as she puts it. Um, and, you know, everybody's going to see, like, the unfiltered Tambra and all that type of stuff. So, at this moment, she not pressed about an engagement from Damon. Damon thought he hit her with the okey-doke and she was going, you know, give in and move into his house and everything. He thought he was going to have a wife without being a wife. And Tambra said, I-I-I, got to be quicker than that. Um, so, moving on. Um... Who's talking to who? Letitia, she goes meets up with Gucci. They have some green juice. Tisha, she has PCOS. I know I've heard of a lot of women who have PCOS. It causes weight gain, pain, like fatigue, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and so she's thinking about getting that little nip tuck. Okay, she wants that nip tuck. Plus, on top of that, she get ready to leave Glenn ass, hopefully. So she like, shit, I want to look good out here in these streets. But um, in the meantime, she's like, before I do the surgery, let me get with Gucci, you know, to at least get healthy. You know, maybe let's take that route first before anything. Um, so she talks to Gucci about that. And then they, of course, get on the party. And, you know, Gucci is basically feeling like Latrice set her up. Now, here's the thing. I don't think it was a Latrice set her up to get Molly Wops. I think it was a Latrice invited selena because okay so what they're friends they're you know she's invited her to other events but she invited selena knowing that there could have potentially been an interaction between selena and gucci so selena could come on and and be you know treese's you know backup you know like i honestly do like kind of agree with gucci where like selena basically was treese's backup because at the end of the day treese knows she effed up with that real estate situation. She knows she should have told Gucci. But instead of just admitting it. And being like you know Gucci. I should have told you my bad. She's being an a-hole. And she's not admitting it. And she's allowing Selena to kind of like. She's projecting onto Selena to like check Gucci. <laughs> when at the end of the day. Like you mad at Gucci. But Gucci kind of had a point with you. Like not telling her. You know about the whole real estate situation. But um. You know, Treese is feeling like, nah, we can't do this. We need a peace treaty. We need the ladies to come together. You know, we are a collective. We can't watch ladies, you know, and they downfall. All that type of stuff. Um, I absolutely believe that, uh, first of all, Gucci mouth is funny. She, she be coming with the jokes. Um, what else was, what else happened? What else did they say over there? Uh, she started talking about um basically how like she's like she need to worry like she's over here worrying about me you know tree she was she she was like tree she over here projecting and putting everything on me you know just because your household you know i you know ain't good you know you i don't even you, you you need to worry about what bed you sleeping in like obviously word got around town about trees in her house and she talked you know taking jabs of her sleeping in separate bedrooms clearly um, she she knew where bed she's sleeping in, like whichever one, you know, if she is type stuff. Like Gucci definitely was dropping some jabs. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, like also Gucci, you can't put it on Treese. Like she just totally, totally set you up. Like I don't think she totally set you up to get your ass beat or like for somebody to come after you. But they're definitely like Treese isn't innocent in the fact of like she knows that okay, Selena was there and most likely was gonna try to, to attempt to check Gucci because she knows she don't like her. Um, and that's just what I believe. 
Aikisha and Marie, they started getting close. Marie comes over with her pinched nose and talks to Aikisha. Um, Aikisha said, girl, I'm over here struggling, baby. I got my big man Willie with his Willie. Uh -huh. Big man Willie over here is by, by himself with the kids. And at night, she ain't got nobody to rub on that voluptuous back of hers and break the bike in. She don't got none of that. So she's going to have to do self-pleasure. Um, and so she's like, I just got to have to do it myself until he get back. So sad. Uh, but, you know, they started talking about stuff. And Marie basically's like, girl, yeah, Tambra, like her ex reached out to me. Or so-called like ex at the time. He was basically talking about how Tamara's a liar. And, you know, he wanted to meet me and treat uh, Letitia. And basically they met him and he came forward with a whole bunch of evidence of how Tamara potentially, like, you know, is a liar. And Akisha's like, ooh, he messy. Like, what he getting out of this? Like, why he doing this? And he, from my understanding, Marie said that he basically was surprised like woke up and saw that Tamara was on tv with another man like he ain't know so i don't know who i believe like although Tamara definitely is a liar you know and definitely can be doing so much sometimes like i'm not gonna be quick to not believe that what Tamara was saying later on in the episode of the type of man that he was because she was like he got upset after i left and i told him no and a lot of niggas do do that you try they get upset when you finally decide to leave and you feel like you done with their BS, like they get upset. So I'm not surprised that Tamara said like, oh, you know, he's, you know, a narcissist that, you know, basically was trying to control me, do all these things. And that's what they do. Like, that's literally what they do. They try to keep their thumb on you. But Marie is like, you know, oh, I got this text about this peace treaty and I definitely need to talk to you know, the Tamra about it, because Tamra at this point, Marie feel like is Marie feel like Tamra is a liar. Okay, she a liar. Uh, Miss Marie, what's going on with your son? That's what I want to know. Why are we not hearing more about your son, who's clearly uh depressed? Obviously, now is dealing with a lot more stuff because of the death of his baby moms. But what is your son doing? That's the story we need to get on. What you what what's going on with your sons, Marie? Your big ass son with with these kids. Hey, he had, like, two, I think the, the the son had a girl, like, pregnant, like, within weeks of each other or something like that. Um, but, yeah, Miss Marie, what's going on with that? Speaking of Marie, she goes to a therapy session, and she basically was like, you know, I, I need to go talk about what's going on in my life. She reveals, you know, her childhood and how one day it was good, next it wasn't. Her mama was on that stuff, okay? You on that stuff? <laughs> Get off that stuff, okay? The heroin, that methylene, that cocaina, okay? She on, she on that, as her mama said, oh, I'm addicted to drugs. The way she put it, drugs. Okay, her mama like drugs. Um, But yeah, so no, Marie basically, you know, was revealing about her life. I appreciate that she had a vulnerable moment on TV a lot. I wish a lot, you know, it's good to have people who are on TV who are vulnerable and, you know, can talk through, obviously, their situations. Um... Therapy, I'm a big proponent of therapy. Like, people need to talk to somebody. Like, I'm a big advocate of it. A lot more people need to go to therapy. Um, but, yeah, no. Um, Marie basically talked about it. And she understands that she is an older woman that, you know, still wants the love of her mom. Or, like, sees her mom and wants the type of love that is different from being, like, she loves me because I'm doing stuff for her, essentially. Um, you know, when you are the everybody's go-to person and you are the giver, a lot of people, you know, will take advantage of that. And trust me, it happens, okay? People be taking advantage of people. You be so nice and they'll use that. Like, they'll use it basically to disrespect you because you are so nice and willing to do anything for somebody. Then you just have to understand, like, when you are a giver, like, you have to establish the boundaries on your own because the taker's gonna take, Okay. The taker's gonna take. Um, so as a you know, as a as a giver, you know, that you definitely have to know um your boundaries, okay? Um, but yeah, moving on. Um who else was talking? So Latrice was it Latrice? Yeah, Latrice and Letitia, they meet up for a little sushi. I, I've been craving sushi so much. Um they were they met up for a little sushi. And, um, 
they started talking about everything. Hold on, y'all. All right, y'all, I'm back. So, um, basically, um, Latrice and Letitia, they meet up for a little bit of sushi. I've kind of been craving sushi a little bit here lately. I ain't even gonna lie. Sushi sounds really good right now. Um, I found this place uh, not too far from me. Like, I really need to go get some sushi. Uh, but, yeah, no, the girls, they meet up for sushi, and they basically discuss what happened. And Latrice is kind of feeling like, yeah, you know, Gucci, she want to blame me and say I set her up and that's not what happened. You know, I did text her and check on her to see how she was doing, if she was okay. And I didn't get a reply. And so, um, she was like, you know, I've been hearing everybody come for me. They want to come for my family. They want to come for my business. So much so, like, it's a detriment, you know. And it's always, it's giving real, it's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. And so, like, even Tisha picked up on it. So it was like, it was giving real tit for tat. And then Gucci as well talked to the uh, to Tisha when she was at the little green juice bar, you know, talking about how she felt, you know, like Selena was coming for her and on account of Latrice as well. You know, it was definitely, um, it was giving, like, or Gucci said was like, yeah, you know, I was hearing around town that Trees basically was saying, like, I bet that'll humble Gucci. Like, I I kind of believe that, y'all, I'm not going to lie. I kind of believe that Trees was doing that. Like, Trees was, is too close with Selena for it, for it not, it not to come across, like, like, for that not to be said. I kind of believe that. Y'all draw down the comments. Y'all believe Gucci when she said that she was hearing around town that Latrice was ba and basically going, like, oh, you know, that should have humbled her, you know, that humbled her ass, like, or y'all believe, like, maybe Selena said it and, and Treese, like, co-signed. But nonetheless, um, Treese is kind of like, you know, I, you know, didn't do nothing, but people always coming for me. And, you know, we do need, as Tisha said, the, the collective is not broke, but it's been a little bit, you know, what can we do, you know, to fix it and make it better? Um, and so Trees basically agrees, you know, she was like, I'll go for you because you my big sis or whatever. Um, um, she's, hey, she's like, I don't like sushi. You got a little grilled shrimp or something. And she was like, now you can put Glendale in your mouth, but you can't eat no shrimp. I hollered. She said, Glendale cooked. I was like, uh-uh. And that's exactly how I feel. You gonna put that mis Glendale got that mystery meat. Okay. That's that mystery community d meat like girl mm -mm, you can't do that no don't want to put that in your mouth you're gonna end up with measles and mumps on them lips the next day you're gonna be confused so last but not least all the ladies get together they're at the break room and you know tisha basically sits them down and was like look you know we all gotta talk she calls selena an intruder she said we got an intruder in the house okay that somebody is running amok in the palace shout out to mama d and, um, you know, she basically was like, you know, we all need to talk because, you know, we no longer want this to happen. And we really want to be an example. Then, you know, we got to all act a certain way and hold ourselves to a certain standard and all that type of stuff. So she's like, I have tables set to the side because, you know, when we're all around each other, we tend to perform. I said, uh oh, I said, well, because sometimes it always is different when you are talking one on one with the person you have an issue with versus you know, a whole table because other people get involved, their opinions, and then it's easy to get off track for what you were wanting to talk about, you know, all that type of stuff. So, um, um, Aikisha and, and Tisha go to a table, Trees and Tamra go to a table, and then Gucci and, uh, I mean, who is it? Uh, Marie and Tamra go to a table, and then Trees and Gucci is stuck at the table basically just looking at each other like who gonna make the first move who gonna make the first you know attempt at, at trying to fix this issue so basically Aikisha was like I gotta get my baby so let's go ahead and talk this shit out so she go over there and talk to Tisha it wasn't too much with them like I feel like they just gonna be at a we see each other type um relationship uh but Tamra and Marie they get to cracking over there and Marie's like well you know Tamra you know, there is this guy that me and Letitia met with and he was saying that he dated you and, um, you know, he just wanted to let us know that you're a compulsive liar, that, you're, that your lives are fake. And Tamara was like, wait, wait a minute. Like, wait a minute. Like, if you're my friend 
and we're all supposed to be building this sisterhood. Like, how you coming for me? And I said, well, touche. I was like, Tamara got a point right there, y'all. Like, touche. Well, like I said, if you even a broken clock is right twice, twice, two times, okay? So it's definitely giving, like, I, y'all, I'm not going to lie. Is it crazy that I kind of believe Tamara with this? Like, a part of me kind of low-key believes Tamara that she was in a relationship and she got ghosts, okay? And it hurt that man's feelings. Like, but there, I guess there was a situation where, you know, they went to court and she filed like a restraining order against him or something like that or a protective order. And Marie's like, girl, well, about that, he sent me, he gave me pictures and everything, how that was dismissed. The judge threw it out. And Tim was like, I can't talk about it because, you know, it was a court case, da, 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 da. And Marie was like, girl, yeah, he's like, you're a tamer, you're a compulsive liar, you don't tell the truth about your life, you're not really with the mind, it's all for a storyline. Marie was going in, it was kind of like, well, Marie, yeah, you starting this fight and everything, but like, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, I, yeah, I don't mess with Tamara, she's not my favorite, but for Marie, like, to kind of, like, I felt, I wish she just would have delivered the information in a different way. I guess I'll put it that way. I just wish she had delivered it in a way or asked it in a way that gave Tamara the opportunity to, like, combat what she was saying. Like, she should have been more inquisitive instead of more accusatory. And that's how it was coming off. And y'all know Tamara is good for a get up and go. So she's like, I'm not doing this. You know, I can't believe this. You know, she gets up and walks away. And that's where the episode ended. Um, next week, we see the ladies. They basically going to be going at it again. There's a birthday party. And Cliff got the absolute effing nerve to sit there and talk to Tisha about, oh, you just need to be the woman for, that you need, that you, that Glenn needs to be. I said, no, this nigga didn't. I said, uh-uh, mm-mm, mm-mm. Guillotine, off with his head. Um, But yeah, you guys, that was Bell Collective. Y'all tell me what you feel about the episode. This is just a quick little recap, nothing too big. Um, How do you guys feel about Latrice? Y'all guys feel like Latrice, you know, not necessarily set her up, but was aware that, you know, Selena and Gucci were going to have an interaction. Um, How do you guys feel about Tamara? Do you guys believe Tamara? Or do you guys feel like, you know, her ex might be telling some truths? Okay, y'all drop it down in the comments. Let me know and I'll catch you next time.